additions to the uh, agenda? Thank you. Any citizens' comments? Speak now or forever. All right. So Don, where Don? Yeah. Don's right here. Don, you have the floor. Talk to us about uh, uh, mold and uh, the emerald ash borer. Yes, um, the uh, city mold problem is a village problem. It was brought up at the village meeting. There's uh, a few trees from here down through the covered bridge that are creating uh, sooty mold and uh, blackening the fences of some of the homeowner, homeowners down through there. And um, we've come up with a couple of proposals. Um, the, probably the uh, only thing we can do there is in the spring, spray them with a horticultural oil, a dormant oil, that will kill the aphids that are causing the problem. And uh, then we can also prune them, thin them out, so that will help eliminate the problem also. The oil is not going to be 100% effective, but it will be 90% um, uh, effective, I think. So um, I've come up with a couple prices. The, uh, the spraying will be about $650. It's just a one-time spray. And um, the pruning will be probably eight or $900. And um, those are the best options we can do at this time. Um, and um, I think that's a, a favorable route to follow. And, and what time, what's the time, what would be the timing of this work? Uh, um, in the spring, first thing in the spring when the buds just start to swell, is when they would be sprayed. And, um, yeah, I'm going to present the, I didn't have the figures at the time of the trustees meeting and I'll present that again to them and we can vote to see if uh, they want to do that, but that's the plan right now. Is this something that spread? It's spread, it's, it's specific to certain varieties of trees and um, it uh, probably, <coughs> probably won't spread beyond there. And it's not a problem unless there's a house or fence or something nearby that the homeowners don't like the black effect from. Outside of that, do you have any uh, a tree management plan for the rest of the trees in the village? Yeah, I'm working on that. We are <coughs> coming up with a plan. There's the green uh, had a lot of um, elms removed in the last few years for Dutch elm disease, and we're coming up with a plan to put new trees on the green. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, how about maintenance, like pruning and so forth? Is there a plan to? Yeah, that's going to be all part of a, a major plan, right? And talking about plans, it moves into the next subject of Emerald Ash Borer that we need to come up with a plan for that. It's a it's a beetle that's infecting <coughs> is moving into the area, and it, if it gets into the ash trees in this area, it will. Um, ultimately wipe them out. The, um, probably within the next 10 years, it's going to be everywhere in the state and the ash trees are going to be on the decline and um, might be a lost species similar to the elms in the, in the next 10 or 20 years. Um, the uh, plan, uh, actually with the uh, Billings Park Commission, we are working on uh, developing a forest management plan with the uh, Red Star. with Red Start Forestry, and they have come up with a couple of ideas on plans for emerald ash borer control and the plan for what to do with the trees. And we're looking at possibly contracting with them to make a plan for the town. If we don't have it done professionally, it will be. A, um, myself and some volunteers, we'd make up a committee and could go through and canvas the town and take an inventory of the ash trees and um, come up with our own plan of what we want to do and what the ultimate control will be. But um, having a professional company come in and um, with everybody having limited time to develop our own plan, that might be the most 
lucrative plan and the most efficient way to do it is to hire it done. Can I tag on, may I yes, tag sure, on that? Sure. Um, in our discussions with Red Star, I found out that they are doing for other municipalities uh, an Emerald Ash Borer preparedness plan for a number of towns have contracted with them to do <coughs> that. And um, it might be a smart idea for us to think about that kind of thing. So, so that's basically where we stand now. We're uh, working on plans and um, um, hopefully by spring have a full-fledged plan to present to the board on uh, um, what we're going to do both with the town trees, uh, the overall town tree plan plus the emerald ash borer control. <coughs> Uh, my, my understanding is that, uh, you know, we all were so shocked that Rutland decided to take down all their, they proactively decided to take, to cut their uh, white ash. And I think all of us were shocked at that, but um, Red Start has, has let us know that the cost goes up significantly once the tree is diseased. Um, Don can speak to that as a tree guru, but trees, um, and that the, con that the contractors will be swamped once it hits big time. So those two things would, I think, encourage us to have a plan for how we address the white ash that's here in, the, in Woodstock. Right. And if they do need removal, if this hits and the trees start dying back rapidly, climbing and removing them by hand is probably one of the most cost-effective ways to do it but nobody will climb once a tree has been infected it becomes very brittle and unsafe to climb so nobody is going to climb a tree once they've become infected so cost removal will go up significantly if that's the case any further questions from the board uh, um did you say your timing for our plan was march next year yeah uh, this spring i didn't have a specific month or date but um we could set, say, <coughs> April 1st. Uh, April Fool's Day. <laughs> <laughs> so is this something we should be putting into our budget? Uh, the three trees that I'm aware of are in the village. I don't know whether they're trees ours or village. Don, just for the record, Town or village. in the past, uh, you don't have a budget for it. You don't work as a tree warden for the town, right? Yeah, yes, or are you both, town, town, both and town and village? Right. Do you? Okay. Yeah, we never have had an official budget for the town. When you take down a tree in the <coughs> park, yeah, is that? Yeah, that's the village. The village picks up that cost, and there was some chunk of money put in the village budget last year, I believe. And what what I've done in the past is just to, when uh, Phil was alive, just go to him and say this tree's dying we need to have it removed and he would just approve the money and we'd go from there there's never been a formal plan on how we pay for it or what the budget is right. trees on parkland butch the the yeah, village I park commission has paid for but i think he's talking about the trees I'm on village and the trees in the, town. In the green right. there's a difference between the park and the green yeah mm -hmm. no I, I i know because i think you were initially used the word park so i just yeah, yeah. So old timers used to refer. So we'll look for something by April first then. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Anything else from the board? All right. So the next thing is uh, we have the great grandsons of <coughs> Mrs. Faulkner here. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that were true. <laughs> so can I introduce these two and what we're going to talk about? I was going to let them introduce themselves, but uh, uh, that's fine. Uh, I think we've all met them, and uh, I think. But somebody do something. Well, so I'm, I'm Scott <laughs> Johnston. I'm with Holland and Knight, and we're counsel to J.P. Morgan Chase in its capacity as trustee of the Faulkner Trust. Aaron Savis is the trust officer who is principally responsible for the administration of the Faulkner Trusts. And I believe you've, you've all received a copy of the memo that we prepared, which summarizes the proposal that we're presenting. Um, <clears throat> but basically, uh, you know, Mrs. Faulkner died in the 50s. One of my mentors, who's now 92, had worked on her estate. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have inherited the trust from him because uh, I, I have a great love for Woodstock. My wife and I met here. Um, and you went? And went to Vermont Law School. That's where we met. 
So um, we'd certainly like to see the town thrive and, and do well. Um, and, uh, you know, in discussing this with the bank, the proposal came up, and also with Allison and Jennifer, um, <coughs> it, it seems that it would make, to us anyway, much more sense for the town to be primarily responsible or responsible for Faulkner Park and the trails. That's the sort of thing often that municipalities do. And of course, the proximity that you have to the park is much greater than Aaron does in Rochester, New York. Um, we realize that there is a financial aspect to this. It costs money to maintain the park and to maintain the trails. And as part and parcel of that, um, we've, we've looked at the numbers, uh, what has been spent over the years to maintain those two properties, if you will, the park and the trails. And <coughs> we also uh, want to make sure that if we were to commit funds that it would be somewhat proportionate to what has been devoted historically by the <coughs> trust to that purpose because we have two other beneficiaries, the homestead, which is was near and dear to Mrs. Faulkner's heart, and, and frankly, we provide a significant part of the funding for the homestead. When I say we, the Faulkner Trust. Um, <coughs> and then also the rec center, which of course all the town benefits from. So we're conscious we don't want to take funds away from those two very important uh, facilities within the town, but we also want to provide sufficient funding to maintain the park. <coughs> And so the proposal has been developed with that in mind. And, uh, you know, there have been examples of things that have come up over the years. The, under Mrs. Faulkner's will, she specified that the park was to be used for quiet purposes only, in essence. Uh, she really only had two specifications. That was one of them. And the other, that there be a plaque there. Well, the plaque is there. And in the agreement with the town, we would ask that that be maintained and that the park continue to be used as it always has been. And those would really be the only two requirements with regard to the way the park is administered. Um, with regard to the funds, we would ask that the funds provided be dedicated to the maintenance of the park and trails, not necessarily available for you know, a barn and dance. <laughs> yeah. Or a park dance. Yeah. yeah, or anything you know other than that. So um, those are the basic uh, parameters of, of the proposal. Um, so right now, um, uh, the maintenance has been done by like three generations of the Worth family. Correct. For the Worth for that. And um, are they, is the one that's doing it now? Jim. Jim, is he... Uh, not wanting to do it anymore, or I'll let Aaron, if you would, because you've had yeah. some communication with Jim. No, I, I don't think it's uh, a matter of you know he, Jim not wanting to do the work any longer. I, I think it's more of a, a matter of appropriate management of the park in terms of uh, you know vicinity and, and and where the bank is located and dealing with uh, you know requests by by the town. Um, I can give you an example. There was a, a wedding request. And, and by the time the request comes in, and then we internally at the bank have various committees that need to make reviews and approvals of that decision. And you know the bit of back and forth that occurs through those types of processes, uh, we tend to not be able to get responses uh, timely. Um, and and I, I think the bank uh, really isn't in a position to deviate from their internal processes. Um, and, and we just begin to think that maybe the town could manage that property, you know, more effectively and in in a way that's a better use for the town's people. But I I don't think we're th there, the proposal is to change uh, who who's managing the park at, at at the moment. I mean, I think Jim, you know, that, that isn't. The, it's just the, the the funding of it would come uh, would now be yeah, our management. Yeah, it would be the town's decision, but local. but we would envision that Jim would continue as he has been. At, you know, he, he maintains, he cuts the grass, he maintains the park itself. He works with us and the National Park uh, doing the trails and, uh, you know, overseeing uh, the trails and identifying when we need. But for every decision, he has to go to corporate. And corporate, it, it, there's a lag time to getting a yes. To get, so that has hampered some of the things we've 
you know that's just it's been a time lag yeah, yeah absolutely yeah and so I, I guess we would envision if the town wanted Jim to you know continue that that would be you know an expense that would come from that lump sum disbursement and you've looked and we worked together I mean, as you know this process began uh, last December Phil and Jill were the Phil uh, Swanson and Jill Davies were the town select board and town manager representatives with the Billings Park Commission as we first met to discuss this um, but I think it's fair to say you uh, from a, a distance it's hard to be managers of a park uh, that you're and it it just became clear particularly when the trail ownership became clear that it was yours and not part of the Billings Park uh, lands any longer that that you know you didn't necessarily want to be in the land management business sure yeah I, I, yeah. I think that I think there, there are two examples that we've offered I mean one where a couple wanted to get married there and a determination was made that well that's peaceful and quiet use of the park it's not playing ball it's not having a rock concert so that was fair enough but then you have to make the arrangements and it's very awkward for a, a bank to be dealing with those things I think um, I don't know if in the past there have been weddings performed on the green I don't think I've seen any but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there have been um, so I think it's a it's a more appropriate fit really for those sorts of things I use my park most every day <laughs> Um, anything from the board any questions we took uh, 20 years of costs uh, both for the uh, maintenance of the park the maintenance and restoration of the trail uh, and the capital investments in the trail and in the park so we worked uh, Jennifer uh, uh, we and and I uh, and Scott and Aaron have worked uh, to average out the those 20 those expenses for 20 years and that's how we came up with the numbers uh, that you're looking at now yeah. uh, and it's divided between uh, the sort of annual park yeah. maintenance yeah. and the annual okay, so I, I think that there's a bit yeah. of an error here I don't think the document that was shared with a couple of us has been shared with everybody yeah, yeah I don't have any, no, so you might want to provide a few some more additional details. copies I can but you might want out. to talk us through some of the more, more sure. of the details actually on the finances which yeah, I imagine is mostly of concern to you uh, that 20 year uh, history that Allison was referring to, the average over that period of time was $47,000 a year. Of that, 22,000 was what I call the general maintenance of the park. That's Jim Worth and other tree maintenance and that sort of thing. And then the trail, I mean, then that's been very constant, really. I mean, you might have you know some sm small changes for inflation etc but it's it's the trail that's more of a variable because frankly for a number of years there was not much done in the way of trail restoration in more recent years there have been, there's been more money spent uh, doing that to make them you know as they should be really um, over you could imagine over time you have uh, deterioration from weather and other things. So we worked <coughs> principally with Jennifer to, to make sure that they were in good shape. But that average came to 25,000 a year. So you put the two together, you've got 47,000. And so, uh, I mean, Aaron has done some, some numerical analysis, but the $850,000 endowment, if you will, that we're suggesting, uh, that should be reasonably calculated to provide for that $47,000 a year. Um, and uh, so we think that's appropriate, and it also does not uh, negatively or adversely affect the interests of the homestead and the rec center. And so in, in compiling some of those numbers, we also did uh, look at uh, some of the additional requests uh, that Jennifer made concerning uh, the, the completion of the uh, five-year capital improvements that we're in the midst of. And that, so the bank took into account uh, those costs as well. And so we, and again, we, we were looking at a 20-year window. And we, we, we so in looking at that process, we, we kind of moved that number from 47 to about 56. And then in, in coming to an agreement, if you will, uh, we, we kind of met uh, a little bit uh, more towards Jennifer's uh, figure. Uh, when, you, when you look at a, 
uh, forecast of, of what type of money would be needed in a lump sum disbursement for $47,000. You're running at about $763,000. If you look at a forecast of an outlay of $56,000 over 20 years, you're looking at a number around 916, uh, and the bank uh, came at a conclusion of around 850, at $850,000, uh, more than meeting uh, that uh, target number uh, halfway. So um, that was some of the basis of how do you come to a idea of an a lump sum disbursement. Now obviously depending on investment performance, inflation, uh, you could come up with various uh, results where that $850,000 uh, $850, could uh, well last past a 20 year period um, and or you could distribute at much higher rates uh, in terms of a fixed 20-year period, uh, you know we 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 see $850,000 really. If if you run some um, analysis on making a fixed payment with an $850,000 initial outlay, a 5% return on a 60% equity, 40% portfolio, which our our generic benchmark models uh, have produced a little over 5% for the last 11 years. And if you index inflation at a higher rate than it's been historically, uh, we're, we're looking at like a, a, an inflation rate of 3%, which historically the inflation rate has been around two. You, you could, that $850,000 would uh, more than last uh, a 20 year period, or you could distribute at a rate of 63,000 and it would last you know 29 years. So you, you, you could really take uh, a different angle on, on what you'd want to do. Excuse me, that 63,000 would last you exactly 20 years. So you could distribute at fixed rates and go beyond 20 years or go higher and you'd you know, essentially meet a 20 year period uh, of outlays. But we, we would say that $63,000 is a, a much higher figure than the historical average has been for an annual outlay for- yeah, Remembering that was 47,000 was the historical average. That's right, yeah, and then that's correct. So who manages that money for us? Do you continue to manage it? Uh, with no. Uh, no. I, think, I think we had in mind, I, I know you have other funds that you're yeah. managing and you would presumably... We, we manage a, a large endowment fund that was um, given to us by Rockefeller and the select board and the trustees are responsible for that and we have an advisory group <coughs> that advises on where that's managed. We do the 60-40 rule. Um, and we take a we, we take out a slightly rising amount for pro, uh, property tax equivalent. So we have experience of managing that, and we would be able to do that. And wasn't that or thought that, oh, yeah. that, that, that that would be a gift <coughs> to the town for us to manage as we choose? Mm -hmm. So then, so you so it's a very generous gift, really, because the trust would give us the land and the money to manage it, and then. Is the land protected then so that, say, a select board in 20 years' time comes in and wants to build houses? Are you going to put well, some covenants So on it? we would prepare an agreement um, <coughs> first in draft, which obviously we would share with you all. And uh, I don't think it would be terribly complex, it would, but it would indicate that the land is to be used in perpetuity as it has always been used, or at least right. since Mrs. Faulkner dedicated it to park use. Um, so no condominiums on the hill. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, it would state that. It would state that the uh, plaque be maintained, that uh, the park be maintained for quiet use, and uh, that the funds be maintained in a dedicated fund for that purpose. There's nothing basically. in the paperwork that I got that said anything about how many acres there is here or any of that. Uh, there's no description. There's this map. I don't know if this was provided to you, and I do have copies of all this. All so there's no these of the property. It, on this map, anyway, and I don't know if Jennifer, it says 25.23 acres. Um, and of course it has a picture. I think you're probably all pretty familiar with what the property itself is, but I have a number of copies. I'll pass these out. When no, I just done. was yeah. curious. I wasn't sure. Sure. We were getting land or just money. <laughs> well, I, I just also like to remind us that for 60 years, almost 60 years, we managed most of those trails <coughs> as thinking that we, the town, and uh, own them. And so when we, uh, in the course of our federal lands 
access grant program found out that actually through Bob Holt's survey, we actually didn't own the trails that we'd been managing for 60 years. That is in some ways what added additional burden to the Faulkner Trust in terms of management and oversight. And I think in some ways called the question on, on whether you had interest in wanting to continue this, the ownership of this. Um, but the, so a, this 25 acres, some of it had already been part of the Bellings Park. Uh, as you may remember and so now it would be I think it in many ways fulfills Marion Faulkner's incredibly generous vision uh, as, as a really it sort of fulfills her gift to to the town in some and wonderful ways as I mentioned in the memo there I think she contemplated this she was really ahead of her days in many different ways I mean I think with the, the homestead you know there's there's an issue we're dealing with these days elder abuse and and creation of that homestead was partly in recognition of that and I think it's 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 a wonderful facility I know I've toured it and uh, been there um, and uh, I think also in, in creating this park I mean obviously Woodstock has a heritage of being very environmentally sensitive so it, it's all uh, I think very good one of the in terms of process I mean what we would like to do with this obviously we would want to hear back from you as to how you feel about it and if you're positive and entertain que any questions that anybody might have. If we have an agreement in principle, then as I say, I would put together a draft agreement which would put into print the things that I just mentioned and then we would submit that to the probate court which is you know where we have our accountings etc for the court's approval and there would be notice that would go out etc uh, on that. And then ultimately, <laughs> hopefully, the court would approve it, you would approve it, and we would have a deal. How, might, how long might that sort of process take? Always a good question <laughs> in the legal world, but we're hopeful we actually have an accounting uh, coming up. We account uh, through the end of March each year. It takes some time to finalize those accountings and then get them before the court. So typically, we have the accountings, uh, say, in the summer. and you know I don't see any reason why this shouldn't I mean it could perhaps come together before that but at the outside I'd like to see if we could do it by the time that accounting was settled. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott do you mm -hmm. just share Question in the back. Uh, yes ma'am. Hi um, yes. my name is Wendy Marinin. I'm a resident on Mountain Avenue. Um, a, a fellow neighbor brought this uh, presentation to my attention. Um, I think there are many neighbors that would have loved to have been here tonight but couldn't at short notice. Um, I spoke uh, specifically the Bradleys asked me to acknowledge that they wish they could be here and they'll be glad to hear you asked in Jim um, what's his last Ward. name? Ward. Ward's Jim Ward. interest Ward. yeah. Ward. that would this impact his job because they feel he's done a very good job mm -hmm. um, with the park but their first question and I think I think you've answered it in, in a simple way is why and I think the simple explanation I'm hearing is it's hard to manage from a distance mm -hmm. so I raise the question for uh, I will sp tell you that we're the neighbors on Mountain Avenue are a little anxious about change <laughs> Um, I think there's a wonderful thing going on with the P Faulkner Trust and the park. Um, it is a well-used park. I can I, I see all the cars lined up every weekend, and you know it's well used, well loved, well appreciated. Um, in the spirit of Marion Faulkner's trust and her interest to the town, it strikes me that she had these three components in the trust in her gift in her passing, considering Woodstock, the homestead you mentioned, the rec, the rec center, and an Faulkner open park. admission um, park, free access mm -hmm. park and trail. So to divide, this is just a practical question, I'm thinking big picture. You're saying you're willing to take a third, or I don't know what percentage of the monies you, you manage, but you're saying you're willing to portion off a part. But I'm willing to guess you don't run it as three separate budgets. So to my thinking, why would you want to give up the flexibility in a bigger picture trust 
where you have the aggregate total when there's a cr crisis in one of the other areas where you can adjust funding because no one's telling you how much to spend where right sure let me, let me take a stab at that and then maybe Aaron Is can and, and keep in mind actually we're both relative newbies this trust has been around since I think the late 50s um, I think Aaron you've been in the saddle for three years three years yeah That's right. and I've been maybe in the saddle for four but 58 <laughs> yeah, you're right absolutely right 1958 yeah. um, the uh, the biggest beneficiary is the homestead, by far. And I think that is consistent with Mrs. Faulkner's wishes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, and then uh, the rec center is a consistent but much smaller beneficiary. And then it costs what it costs to maintain the park and trails. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the park has been a fairly constant sort of situation. The trails is something that can vary depending upon the condition and, and the desired uh, manner in which they're maintained. So um, in terms of your question, I think what I've tried to indicate is that the 850 is basically uh, calibrated such that it's about proportionate to what the trust has spent historically on the maintenance of the uh, trails in the park. And yes, I mean, I, I think, you know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think the town would certainly want to take the land without the funding to provide for it. Um, so I think if we're going to do a deal which makes I think a lot of sense in terms of, of, you know, handling things locally, the management of the park and trails, uh, then we do need to be prepared to devote a certain portion of the funds under management uh, to the town and commit them to the town to go along with the land. And as I say, to be fair to the other beneficiaries, they should be proportionate to that which is typically spent uh, for those purposes. So when we first hit the street as a proposal, some of the question, some of the comments I got was, that's fine, but the next one coming is the rec center. Mm. That the Faulkner, <coughs> the trust fund for the rec center would soon become the same issue that you'd want to give the recreation uh, to the town and uh, some money to manage that and not manage the rec center from a distance. Now, uh, of course, we don't. Oh, we do own the parklands, but yeah. we don't own the rec center. Right. We simply are, are a contributor toward the uh, right. annual costs of the rec center. But do you think that there's a distant future that the Faulkner Trust would only like to manage the homestead and not be involved in the recreation department for the town of Woodstock? I don't think that's, I think it's a different situation. I think with the rec center, we see that we're making a grant each year of, how much is it, Aaron? $30,000. $30,000 a the year. Fall. And so, you know, if the someone wants to use the rec center for, you know, a basketball game or whatever it is that it's being used for, um, that doesn't really require any input from the bank. You just give them the money. That's yes. correct. And then there's they a. Do whatever they want with it. Yeah. That's correct. And there's a separate trust, uh, the the Woodstock Rec Center Trust, that distributes the right. income from that trust, which is around a million dollar trust. And so, and, and I can say I to. Sure. sure. I mean, I suppose if the rec center wanted to do something wild and crazy that was borderline illegal, maybe the bank would have a concern about that, but that's never going to be a problem. Yeah. So there, there's less oversight with that in terms of going through committees within the bank to make a determination. Uh, th that's correct. And, and we distribute roughly 40% of the operating budget for the homestead, which, you know, we, we, we feel we want to position the trust portfolio to, to, you know, manage the rec center and homestead appropriately. And, and when you look at, you know, the needs that the homestead has uh, and the trust ability, ability to meet, uh, you know, a substantial amount of that operating budget, you know, that, that, that is, you know, one, you know, an element of working through this process. Um, is it the same relationship with the homestead that you really just give them a grant? Uh, that, that is correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Question in the back. Yes. So, um, I have two cons when, 
I have two concerns when a, a situation like this arises and these decisions get made. Um, and I've witnessed them happen and other entities uh, having lived at a boarding school, for example, where there's endowment and, and names are attached to s generosity. Um, I worry that we will erode Marion Faulkner's legacy. I think the next generation will then just, it'll be a town park. You know, it'll just, I, I worry yeah. that this erosion could happen because it isn't a separate entity. It's no longer a separate entity. And then the same kind of thing on the other side is that the town's, to your question earlier, use of the, of the space will then erode or change accordingly. Um, when we take one step and we chisel away an entity that was set up, we risk, to your point, to the rec center being next, et cetera. I do think there's some danger in, in uh, letting go of that defined so, entity. Yes? So one way we might think about how we do this is um, if we manage a fund from which a certain amount of money comes each year, we could put it into the town coffers and the town could pay that person. We could keep it completely separate. Mm. Um, and and then that money would always be dedicated to the park as, as it's going to be written. And the park if the if the draw if the regulations are written, we can't deviate from them because they're sa they're sacrosanct. And it would also be the provision to maintain the plaque, so that would recognize Mrs. Faulkner as it does today. History being what it is, I mean, there's always the possibility that she will be less recognized. There are probably some people, perhaps still around, that knew Mrs. Faulkner, and that that will fade in time. Although we will tell you, we're over at the inn, and they have the Faulkner salad on the menu, so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I just want to say, I, I, I live on River Street, so I live very close to the park, and I've hiked to Randy Richardson, uh, and I, so I live and work, and I also happen to be on the Billings Park Commission, um, and part of what I, I found very comforting about the discussions that we had um, as a Billings Parks Commission and thinking about this is that actually uh, the original intention and the focus of Ms. Faulkner was a big part of our discussion, and also that the intention was to maintain the integrity and also to even more really because we all live close by and we're all Woodstock residents as a part of that commission that the advisor that that the advisory role that we play is to maintain both the original intent but also the good of the town you know including the local residents and so to me that, that this makes so much sense you know not having spoken directly with you folks um, but it's very comforting to me because I the park is very near and dear to, me, to my heart and I use it literally every day so uh, so I, f I feel good about it I, I definitely hear you also as someone who's a long-term independent school person and is worried about these kinds of things as well including endowments I, I totally uh, relate to those things but I'm, I'm very comforted by what I've heard so far and uh, and I think it makes a lot of sense and I think it gives local control but also very much the the legal parts of this will be written up that it maintains the original intent and there's a a real commitment within the town um, and certainly the village and the concept of that to maintain the history and the integrity of the history of it so uh, I just want to say I, as someone who's sitting on the board and been a part of these discussions although relatively new to it I'm very comforted that it will maintain that, that sense of history in the, in the town. Oh, and, and may I? Uh, could I go to her, please? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Jen Jen Jennifer yeah. White, National Park Service, Rivers and Trails Program. <coughs> so um, I did want to just say that the impetus for the beginning of the Faulkner Trail Restoration actually came from the Billings Park Commission. So um, at that point, your predecessors in the Faulkner Trust um, we're doing a good job with the Faulkner Park itself, but the trail really hadn't been taken care of except for Jim's work and clearing blowdowns and um, brushing it off and that sort of thing. So it was actually the town that really um, got the vision together to say Mrs. Faulkner's you know, idea of what this trail should be for the community um, 
needs it needs to go back to that vision as a walkable you know smooth beautiful trail where you can stroll and a quiet you know gorgeous park kind of thing and, and that hadn't been the case with 2009 I think we did the first walk through of the trail and said gee we you know really need to do some serious work to restore the trail and the beauty of it and may I just tag on to that because um, uh, when he, in one of the things that our very productive partnership with the Faulkner Trust and the National Park as we have restored this trail and as we have marketed the 30 miles of trails that are accessible from the green is actually we're telling that fabulous story of Marion Faulkner's gift to the town her honoring her husband who had rheumatoid arthritis and one of the reasons she copied the Baden-Baden trails it was specifically to encourage health and healthy living in this town and we have uh, been promoting and, and now in, in many ways with our literature and our, our, our promoting these trails that story is getting told much more publicly and, and much more often than it has been in the last 60 years so we're I, I, uh, I think we're doing nothing but uh, promoting Marion Faulkner's vision for uh, the town of Woodstock and for this park. When you say we were talking Billings? Billings Park Commission, Park which Commission. is delegated by the town as the commissioner, as the commission which oversees the parks in this town. And only all local, of and all locals. Yeah. Yes, and all, all of the parks. And all yeah. Not just Billings. Right. No. Mount and Tom Peg. and Mount Peg. Oh. Billings Park, which is on, on Mount Tom and Mount Peg Park. So is Billings Park part of Billings Farm? No. No. Okay. So, Same but thing. I <laughs> thank you. So, um, I just I had one more um, uh, question slash suggestion. Thank you for sharing that. Is my understanding that right now that you, the trustee of um, addressing this to the <laughs> to the <laughs> trustees, that you work with the abutting property owners as trustees in overseeing the Faulkner Park? Is that not a part how, of the... How do you mean work with the abutting? Well, uh, my understanding, and this I heard anecdotally, that the um, abutting property owners to Faulkner Park are part of a decision-making once-a-year meeting with the trustees. There's, there's a probate hearing. Yeah. There's a probate hearing which they're able to attend. And that is just to see, say where we're at each year? Right. So that's... It's not a full we, we haven't really had any in, in the accounting hearings that I've been involved with. Um, we've had very little in the way of questions. I mean, we have a great deal of communications with the Homestead and the Rec Center. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong, Aaron, I don't think there have been, you know, because there haven't been concerned by no. neighbors, because I think the park, you know, has been operated as desired and as expected under yeah, the wills. Yeah. But when, when we began the fall. We posted uh, we, a few years ago, quite a few years ago, that the, the Faulkner Trust Commission or whatever you are would be at the court and if you had mm -hmm. something you would come and, and speak your piece and I haven't seen that well, for a few <coughs> years. When we have the accountings and they they used to be annual, and we have uh, made them less frequent. Uh, one of the trusts is every three years, and I think the other both ones both are. They're okay, so they're both every three years now. Because it gets fairly costly to be we doing them every year. Ask for more money for the rec center right. years ago. Yeah. And so and we had a selectman that was very uh, prompt at being there every <laughs> year to uh -huh. make sure that we... <coughs> yeah. Well, the, the notice, when as part of the process, when we file the accountings, we do publish a notice in the Vermont, in the standard, um, that the hearings will be held on a certain date and time, and, and so people, yes, but it will be every three years. As I say, the next one coming up will be through March 28th, which was report. approved by the court. Okay, uh, and then, and the fact that they haven't been happening is because you changed the, the frequency. Court. Yes, the court approved. The, the expanding yeah. the, the so to, to Jill's point in terms of portioning off could it also not be you know let's say we keep the whole trust intact as an idea but then you have a local management so, so I, I, I know that you know an, annually what we've done you know, during my tenure concerning trail maintenance 
uh, and the trust looking at outlaying uh, that that twenty five thousand dollars to do additional trail work we worked with billings uh, and Perfect. making right. and making those decisions uh, and what that cost would look like and again that's where we, we, we came up with that uh, figure on average it's it's been about twenty five thousand dollars in some years it's been uh, higher we, we did do a spike or a campaign that wrapped up in a two-year time frame where we outlaid one hundred and fifty thousand to start uh, that, that renovation process of, of the trails but mm -hmm. that's where we've worked with billings in so in, a, in essence you have a team on the ground yes to, yes to we, do. You guys. Right. <laughs> yeah. we do yeah and, and, and in the low in a local sense yes and, and jim also you know jim, jim will reach out to me uh you know and we'll look at you know what what type of tree harvesting needs to be done or, or maintenance <laughs> uh, but we also do that in conjunction with after billings trees. as well and after storm yeah. Who, yeah. Who owns the equipment over there? Does the gym own it or does, 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 does the Faulkner own Who owns it? Yeah, Jim owns it. So what we'll do is, is Jim will submit to me an annual receipt uh, for costs associated with the fuel he's outlaid, uh, as well as you know uh, repairs to his equipment. Uh, we've talked about uh, an upgrade to a, a couple pieces of equipment. One was a, a, a leaf blower, um, but uh, quite honestly, uh, we spoke about it, and you know I, I've not received any. I asked for some estimates, and we, we haven't received those. But those would be types of things that we would do. Um, you know, for in addition to you know the the cost associated to his wage, and then um, Chippers is contracted out for hazard tree removal, or like after that January storm last year, I, I don't know how many fifteen trees or something up near South Peak they had to clear, um, and then I think you also have a subcontract for it took leaf, that one big leaf sucking. Yes, <laughs> yes, we do. It yeah. took that one big maple there this fall. In so all of all of that is covered by the twenty five thousand pay to Jim. Uh, yeah, the, the Jim's salary is twenty two. Uh, well, it's yeah, it's fourteen. It's, excuse it's me. Here. So Jim's Jim's average three year cost three. of salary has been thirteen thousand nine hundred and fifty three dollars. Uh, the cost associated with uh, the workers' comp insurance that we carry on, Jim, uh, uh, is, is on average um, for th the last three years, $1,034. Reimbursement of expenses, the average for the last three years has been $1,430.52. And then the cost associated with chippers since 2016, and, and quite candidly, we, we, we've seen a spike in 2019 uh, to this point. Uh, as well as 2016 there was a bit of a spike 2018 was a, a lull but on average uh, we're, we're looking at four thousand nine hundred and forty six dollars in, in costs associated with tree removal which would be in addition to Jim you know that's comprises of what we would say that twenty two thousand dollar average behind you again sorry I'm, yeah. I'm representing many people sure well, we can, um, as because we I have we've have talked on the street is it does the Faulkner Trust not also pay a annual property tax to the town of Woodstock for the land? I think there's a. It's not necessarily a property tax. Now or correct a, me or if I'm a, wrong, Aaron. I think it's a, a contribution. Yes, yes. In lieu yes. of tax. The there's small, money that yes. goes to the town now from the trust in lieu of property tax because that land became out of property tax area, right? Yeah, that was worked out historically. I don't have all the details on yeah. it. I know that Aaron does either, but um, frankly, I could ask Bob Casey, my mentor. Um, but yes, there is a small, yes, relatively yeah, small amount. Yeah, and, and I think it was, was uh, you know, precatory in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can say that, you know, the, the last couple of years, there has not been a remit from the trust to, to the town. Um, but obviously, th those were accounted for or recorded in the accountings, uh, which were, were approved by the court. But uh, we, we have not, uh, and again, it was suggestive language by Mrs. Faulkner uh, that the trust could contribute dollars to the town in lieu of taxes. Uh, but but that, um, you know, that outlay, you know, has, has not occurred has in the last few years. Because... Well, it no. isn't again it isn't required it's oh, something it's that's discretionary it's, it's a suggestion you know mrs faulkner's language was suggestive in nature and uh you know candidly we 
you know we're we're using those dollars you know and and to 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 uh, directly manage the, the park as well as dollars associated to homestead things that and nature. as Aaron mentioned earlier there has been a five-year program for the restoration of the trails and so that has been a, a bigger draw kind of a justified trust, kind of offset you know. uh, uh, it's been very expensive our restoration I mean we've been using uh, the wonderful historic uh, trail restorer Peter Jensen and we have worked and leveraged uh, one of the pluses of this becoming a town a property again is that we'll be av able to leverage more grants because once they found out that the trail wasn't owned by the town anymore we a whole number of grants we couldn't access that we could if it was town owned but the Faulkner Trust we are so indebted to their generosity because they really enabled the beginning of this major restoration of this historic trail which has taken it, we have been working the way we've been able to afford it is to do a little bit uh, every year and the first couple of years $150,000 uh, to get it started and launched and the new kiosk and stuff they have been so generous uh, in helping get it started and now our challenge is to finish it um, but the which I think we will yeah, I just wanted to support that uh, I definitely see the point about the in lieu of taxes and you know seeing that as something that would be a benefit Part of the, the thing about, for me, both as a, um, having had to do this both in independent school world again and also in a situation like this, is this is a case where the public benefit is so huge that really, as, as you stated, really they're paying taxes to the town in that sense. I mean, this is both from a, from a health perspective in terms of the locals, as, as you know, who use the trail so actively, but also um, as something that's contributing to the economic development and the, and the support of the town in that way. So part of the, the, what I like about the Billings Park Commission, just to, and as, a, as another person who's very close to the park, is that part of what we're trying to do is really think about how we think about all of the trails in town and how we spread the wealth of use of the town and think about how we continue to look at that. Um, I do think that, frankly, that the, the park is overused a little bit, um, certainly at certain times of year. There's only so much that we can affect that, but by really thinking of it holistically and locally, and people who, everybody who serves on the Billing Park Commission is local in that way, that we are also concerned about that and trying to make sure that we're thinking about the use of it both from a historical perspective, but also uh, holistically and how the town is both, th this is something that's a benefit for locals and also as something that's economic development and for the good of the town in that way. So, uh, and in that way, I think that the fact that the money's gone back into the park is a very appropriate use, and it's basically virtually taxes in that way. So and and doing the restoration in such right. a way that trying to go another hundred years. You know, right. Does anybody, uh, does anybody have anything they'd like to add different? I think we'd like to bring this to a conclusion here and uh, uh, move on to other business. Anybody got any other further comment? Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Thanks to everybody. Um, Thank you. Well, seeing board, that there's does the board have any questions? Well, seeing as there's apparently some paperwork that we didn't get for tonight, I think that we need to um, receive it. And I think that we don't know if we have questions at this point. Right. So, so can you we, understand can we Can we discuss and come back to you with some questions? Oh, absolutely. And, and our <coughs> next meeting. <coughs> Thanks for your presentation. Is, and is uh, the, Yeah. I think Mary's right. We we'll, we need to see the whole package. Is the information in there where <coughs> uh, where it's the original trust was oh. was established? Oh, the board. Yeah, I thought you'd all gotten no. no, no, no. It just came yeah. to Frank and myself, and we didn't know it. Oh, it's almost. It's kind of like mom. <laughs> That's not There's only just one thing I might add because I know, I'm sorry, is it Kathy? Wendy. 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 Mentioned possible dilution of recognition of Mrs. Faulkner's contributions as a concern. And one thing, uh, you had an intern who did some fairly significant research into oh, yeah. the background of Mrs. Faulkner. I thought it would just be good for people to know that and yeah. perhaps it could It'd be, be nice made to available. share that. I actually, yeah. we worked with Matt at the Wisconsin <coughs> Center and a UVM Historic Preservation Studio. And she went back and tried to find as much information like about Mrs. Faulkner's story. Property that, you know, like that 
Uh, yeah, it should be at the it's back. The it's the last page there. Okay. I'm so yeah. sorry, you guys didn't have to. Sorry, I'll assume you you've gotten that, and I'm, uh, I mean, I just assume Frank and I'm okay. sure that I apologize. I, I thought you were going to do a handout oh, and there presentation it is. tonight. And here it is. Uh, <laughs> so, so we're well informed that we Do you have the uh, financials you talked about? Do you have about <laughs> so is, is anybody in the audience want these? Uh, do you have one? Do you have one? Um, <coughs> oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And the... Um, so the, the number of justification <coughs> is inside the memo? Yeah, um, at the top of page three is kind of the basic discussion of the finances. Okay. For Falcon and Paris. Yes. I have and a little so interest about the more rec more center more. as well, and um, and this is not the night to talk about that financial information, sure. but um, I'd like to know a little more about that. If there's any summary you can send to us, sure. or something of that nature. Sure, uh, of what the rec center receives on an annual Yeah, and well, how so that, that was set up in her original. Yeah. Okay. Directly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's good. When it was established, if I could please. Sure. The, I am interested in that. And um, because the gentleman said $30,000 a year, Aaron said 30000 a year, plus there's income, income from a separate trust. A separate trust. That's correct. So income from a separate trust, an amount. You know, the, yeah. the, a little bit of that information sure. would be helpful a, to us. I think Gail's talked about it before as being yeah. a variable amount. Yes, yeah. it is. It's so it's it's the income that's generated off of that. That's a, basically a million dollar holding inside of the Woodstock Rec Center Trust. Um, on average, our portfolios, and, and again, we're a very historically interesting environment as it relates to interest rates and income yield in general. But we're running around a two point four percent. Uh, income yield off of our tallard uh, structured portfolios that are, are weighted in at least a 60-40 allocation. Thank you. Uh, Again, so I don't want to sure. talk about all of that sure, tonight, sure. but I'd like to see how that goes. And the homestead, I know that that's a generous... Wendy? Um, Marion Faulkner's will is now public domain, and it's possible to get a copy of it. And I would encourage the select board to ask, have that forwarded. Was it Scott? Scott? Scott. Uh, well, you, or are you yes. Scott? Uh, I'm, I'm Aaron. Uh, Scott. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. I think one of you can forward it to the select board. Absolutely. And will. Absolutely. Because that explains <coughs> her thinking. I mean, it's in very, it's in Wait, we have law, it. yeah. language. Yeah. It's in, Which but actually it, in that handout, there's a nice it's quote. quote. So, so I don't know how yeah. much you've quoted, but at any rate, that is a I'll reference tool that gives context. Right oh. Yeah, it, 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 it's good that the quotes are quite good. Sure. I, I, I'm so sorry, we've been talking, assuming that you had all yeah. yes, this, I just assume I have a range. Okay. You know, we can't function on assumptions. I guess we should have been explicit. The presentation was good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, okay. you, for Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very That's much. <laughs> Old business. What do we have yes. for old business? Just us. So we'll move on with the agenda now. Huh? Just, Just us. us. <laughs> Just old people, not old business. <laughs> we all sat with old business there, madam. Okay, yeah. so the next one is the uh, uh, Snowmobile Club request for uh, Larry Curtis, the Quinn Road, Grassy Lane, past the Morgan Road, no Wood Road and Academy Circle. Town Hall 35 for the Lincoln Covered Bridge East for approximately a thousand feet from, I should say, from the Lincoln Covered Bridge. Town Hall 47 from the Trailer Park to the edge of Beaver Meadow. Class uh, 4 Road from um, Town Highway 38, Borden Road and 12 Long Hill. For those of you who snowmobile, this is basically the same as it was the last same, year. I was just that. going to say this is no change from. I make a motion we approve it. Seconded. Motion has been made and seconded that we approve the 
highway use for the snowmobile travel. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. So, permit for the Board of Sewer Commissioners. No permit. No, no permit. No permit. Right. Okay. So, moving on, we have a manager's report and a financial report. <coughs> well, you have the financial report in your packet. Yes. Is this till the end of October? Uh, yes. I think mine can be painfully brief. Yeah. You're ready? You have questions on the financial? No. <coughs> no. Oh, I, I, thank you very much for doing the report like this. It's much easier to read. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The, uh, just a quick review of the prime undertakings. The, as you all know, the budget worksheets or budget workbooks have been distributed and will continue to be refined. Um, I think I mentioned at the budget workshop that it's our intention to uh, show income at the bottom of every department so you have some idea of how departments are working. Um, the capital projects. Um, are being estimated as we speak uh, and I think we're shooting I would hope we have budgets pretty well completed by the December meeting um, for public purposes the town hall the discussion took place earlier this evening um, <coughs> presentation was made on what would be the low budget version I guess and um, I think we've been sent back to the drawing board for a a different version. Um, the EMS building, um, the footprint and the uh, layout and the elevations are in the back of the room here. Um, cost estimates are still a work in progress. We have the first information meeting. Information forum will take place between 1 and 5 on December 4th. Certainly encourage everybody to go if you haven't taken the tour you should and anybody that's watching or listening should go take the tour um, project displays are here in the town hall in the EMS building and over at the uh, Norman Williams library um, and when do we get a chance to ask questions about this okay. if we can't do the December 4th when do we get what, Jill? I'm sorry. When would we have a chance to ask questions about this if we can't do December 4th? Uh, we're going to have several, three public uh, uh, informal meetings, uh, walkthroughs together with numbers. By the time we get to December 4th, we'll have budget numbers on this uh, for discussion purposes. Um, and actually, any of you that want to take a personal tour, I'm sure that David would be more than happy to accommodate. And it might be, it might be a good thing to do. I mean, um, I think that would be a great thing to do. Uh, sidewalks and roads, uh, the shimming project uh, has been postponed until spring, and I think there will be further discussion on that depending on what spring looks like. It got shimmed today, didn't it? Yeah, I got shimmed a little today, but <laughs> nothing like you got shimmed outside of town, I can assure you of that. Three inches of snow. The wastewater facilities are still waiting for Stantec to do the alternative, alternative analysis on South Woodstock. Um, and again, for budgeting purposes, we need to know how much that's the, the alternatives are going to cost. Um, we reviewed that at the budget meeting this morning a little bit. Manager search, the search committee uh, has finished its work and um, we are down to four prospective candidates. Uh, the interview uh, 
on-site interviews are being scheduled as we as we speak. Uh, the league is working on that. Um, we should have a f well. And let me let me see. the uh, the program for those for the four of them. Um, they will arrive um, mid morning. Uh, there's a concern, a little bit of a concern about confidentiality on some of them because they're they're still employed. So the plan would be to uh, kind of do an in-car tour of, of town facilities. We'll take them around. Uh, I'll bring them in here. We'll we'll have lunch and uh, schedule interview meetings in the 1115 range. Um, and I think if we. No, I guess I'm waiting for perspective dates from them, but then we'll we'll get perspective dates out for you and the trustees to uh, so you can plan like a one o'clock uh, interview process. So, so the process will start with you and this person, yep. uh, and you'll do the tour with them. I'll take end them up around. here. Okay. Um, and then uh, have lunch uh, back here and. Uh, Absent objection, I'm probably going to ask David to join me for with the candidate for lunch, and we're going to have a question and answer about things in the town and, and the village. Um, and then when they get to you for the interview process, uh, they'll be well briefed. They'll be briefed. You can have at them. Um, I think the uh, I haven't had a chance to say this publicly before, but. I was very impressed with the with the efforts of the search committee. Um, the uh, it's hard to get ten people to commit to the time frame to get this done, and, and by and large, it was a, it was a good process. The uh, ten of them we interviewed uh, using uh, Skype or some electronic version. They were up on a, on a screen, and we could see them. They could see us. Um, that worked really well. The committee worked really well. I thought I thought their cooperation was super. Um, any other questions on manager search? I think we're making good progress. Um, the test for the wastewater treatment facility has been a bit of a disappointment. That's taken about a month and a half longer than I thought it was going to, but. We do believe that it will be finished uh, by next uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, and then it's, we have to put some doofus back in and get the uh, system working again, get that up and running. Uh, Lincoln Bridge work continues. Optimistically, they're thinking, they're still thinking mid-December. I'm saying first of the year. but. They're thinking mid-December, the last conversation we had with them. The wastewater treatment plant re-roofing project um, is well underway. Uh, we did make one additional change there in the, uh, the flue work for the existing furnace, which goes up through the roof, is being replaced. Uh, it's just a good time to get it done. It's old and ancient and ugly. The, uh, the, uh, change in health insurance for the employees. Uh, paperwork has been complete. Uh, we'll be active uh, with MVP on January 1st. As I mentioned earlier, the, the total cost uh, the total cost would be slightly less than, uh, than last year. Uh, so there'll be no increase uh, no increase and over the course of the year we save a little over fifty thousand dollars. If had we stayed with our previous carrier, um, and I've so far it seems like uh, everything is going smoothly, very smoothly. And the personnel policy manual, Serena and Jill, and I do the meet on Thursday morning at seven thirty. Um, and I think after that meeting, we can probably get it on to the department heads for. Uh, your comments and uh, hopefully we'll have a document ready for your consideration by December.
by your December meeting. And that's the sum total, Mr. Chairman. I'd be happy to refer to a few questions. Very good. There's a lot happening. There's a lot happening. Thank you. Okay. You have the financial reports in front of you. Uh, we need approval of the minutes and to sign some papers. And that being done, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. We have to do the minutes. We have to do the minutes. So yeah. And, the and minutes. <laughs> remember, we're all back here on the Friday, Friday morning. Friday the morning. Fifth. Uh, no. No. Um, yeah. Are we here this? Friday? No. No. Yeah. It's Friday the 22nd. It's Friday the 22nd. Yep. That's for the joint meeting. Yes. Yep. And then we're back for budget. On the 5th. Um, or somewhere. 5th um, or 6th. 5th. I think it's six. Friday the 6th. Yeah. Whatever. We'll send them a reminder. He'll show up. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. We have to do right. the minutes. Do I have to do the minutes? Yeah. 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 Yeah.